Today, I'm gonna to teach a full lesson on Chopin's famous Nocturne in E flat major. I call this one of my signature pieces because I've performed it and taught it for many years. It was also my grandma's favorite piece and she asked me to play it every time she visited. I'm gonna walk you through each page and show you how to practice it and master tricky areas like the polyrhythms and the trills. And I'll also show you how to play this lyrical and expressive with various dynamics and phrasing and interpretation ideas. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Heather. This piano lesson is a request from one of our viewers named Giovanni. So we hope you find this video helpful, Giovanni. And so you all know, we love to hear from you. It's really helpful to read your comments and your ideas about what videos you'd like to see on this channel. Okay, let's quickly talk about what a nocturne is. A nocturne is a short musical composition, usually for the piano, and the French word translates to the night. So we want to play this in a way that helps the listener envision a calm evening. We wanna play it smooth and dreamy. That brings me to my first practice tip. So I recommend that you practice this without the pedal for a while and work on connecting the notes with your fingers. I know that doesn't sound very fun, but if you can connect the slurred notes with your fingers, then when you do add the pedal, it'll sound really smooth and beautiful. A first step would be to practice the left hand alone without the pedal and focus on connecting the notes with the slur. So I'm gonna leave out the single notes at the beginning of each beam, and I'm gonna focus on just the chords and connecting the chords. And notice that I'm using finger two and five on each, on the first chord, and then I am holding my pinky down and connecting into the next chord. That's what creates that legato smooth sound. Once you feel comfortable with the chords in the left hand and connecting the slurs, then start practicing all of the notes in the left hand. So I'm gonna add these single notes back in but I'm gonna to continue to practice without the pedal so that this really becomes a habit of connecting with my fingers. Once you feel like you've really got that down, you can practice the left hand with the pedal. Make sure to practice the right hand alone a lot without the pedal and work on connecting the notes with your fingers. The pedal masks a lot, and when we practice without it, we're more aware of what we really sound like, and also we're aware of connecting the notes with our fingers. So on the second phrase, I noticed these two note slurs here. So make it sound as beautiful as possible without the pedal. And then when you do add the pedal, it'll sound so much more smooth and legato. Once you can play hands separately well, then start practicing this hands together in small sections. And I like to make each phrase a section. One of the main things that you need to continuously be aware of is balance. So the right hand has the melody throughout and it should sing out over the left hand. Uh, the left hand notes can cover up the right hand because of the full chords and because lower notes sound louder than higher notes. So you have to work at keeping the left hand quiet. It may help you to think of the right hand doing the dynamics and the left hand staying soft throughout. to talk to you about another really important concept in this piece and that's phrasing. If you play this like a metronome and too steady it's going to be dull and lifeless. So listen for places where the notes have natural tension and release and that will help you to figure out where to push forward in the music and where to slow down a little. So listen to how I shape this first phrase. Thank you. 
pay close attention to all of the markings in the music. Chopin put a lot in the music that will help us with phrasing. So notice these retards in this section. with phrasing, I recommend listening to some professional recordings while you watch the music. Listening to good phrasing and performances will really help you to develop this skill. Let's look at the trills and ornaments now. You'll want to learn this piece from a good edition so that you have some guidance on the correct fingering and notes to play. The edition I'm showing in this video is the Macaulay IMSLP edition uh, for copyright reasons but my mom and I really like the Josephi edition, and I will link that in the description below. So on this first turn, you're gonna notice there's a flat above the turn sign and a natural below it. That means to start on the main note and then go up to a D flat, back to the main note, down to a B natural, and back to the main note. And on these trills, you don't have much time to trill because of the 16th notes. So this first one, you're going to do F, G, F, and then E flat, F, E flat. And here you have a longer period of time to do a full trill. I recommend starting on an F. Chopin generally started his trills on the note above the main note, but in this circumstance, there's a G right before the trill, and so I feel like it sounds better with an F to trill starting on an F. places in this piece where you'll notice portato markings. A portato is in between a staccato and a legato, and you'll want to use pedal on these, but you may use the pedal a little differently for each measure that you see the portatos. So for this first section here, my left hand, I'm changing the pedal on the first note of each beam. Change, change. And my right hand, I'm going to lift off of the keys. to create that portato sound. So it's not a short, crisp staccato sound. It's soft because we're using the pedal. And here, I'm going to change the pedal for each chord, and I'm gonna still lift off of each, off of the keys, so. A little bit about the polyrhythms in this piece. It wouldn't be Chopin without a polyrhythm, right? So for this first polyrhythm and for any polyrhythm, it's helpful to practice hands separate and figure out how you want it to sound. So when I'm playing my right hand, I'm thinking about that accent there. When you play hands together, it's important that the left hand stays steady and the right hand is more free. So one thing that you can do when you're first starting to learn this hands together is put the metronome on to make sure your left hand is staying steady. My metronome's at 76 here. So you don't have a lot of freedom when you're practicing with the metronome, but eventually you can turn off the metronome and make it a little more expressive. And I like to do a retard here at the end of the polyrhythm. So. For 
this polyrhythm, it may be difficult to figure out where the right hand and left hand fit together. But if you count in ands, that might help you with your, your right hand. So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and. So this fits together. On this polyrhythm, you could try to stagger the left hand and right hand notes again in this way. But remember that the left hand needs to stay steady. So you can practice with the metronome. There are a few important tempo markings on the last page that I'd like to mention. So here you'll see a poco rubato, and that means to play freely without a strict tempo. So experiment a little and figure out how you'd like this to sound. Uh, this is how I hear it. stretto and that means to increase the tempo and you'll see a senza tempo here. Senza means without so you could play this part a little more free. I don't know if you can notice, but it's nighttime now and I started filming in the morning and I had so many distractions today with the dog and the kids. And so after teaching five hours, I'm back to filming. So that's why the lighting is different. This tends to be a really difficult passage. There's 12 beams of repeating notes and the way I keep track of how many notes I've played is I'll count three groups of four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then it's hard to transition into these next notes. So I usually slow down a little bit before the riento. Riento means to slow down. And then you'll see a smorzando after, and that means to gradually fade. I put the soft pedal on at the smorzando to prepare for the pianissimo here and then the pianississimo on the very last measure. When you're playing these, keep your hand relaxed and try to do a little bit of a wrist rotation. That should help. And I don't use any damper pedal on these. And then I add it on the last two measures. So. Let us know in the comments if you have any other questions about this piece. I wanted to mention that my mom created a beautiful piano duet arrangement of this piece. So I hope you'll go check it out on our other channel at Briante Piano Duo. Happy practicing.